This video was brought to you by Slidebean Founders Edition. Get help from our team in your pitch deck, your financial models, and your fundraising. Sign up with the link in the description. Over the last few months, our advisors and our legal team have been working tirelessly to solve a terrible startup predicament that nobody plans for. Growth. Slow growth. And notice that how for any other company, growth means success, but not for a venture-funded company. This is a fundamental concept you have to understand if you intend to pursue venture capital. Let's draw a line between a startup success and a startup failure in the eyes of a venture capital investor, in the eyes of Silicon Valley. On this side, we have failure. The company goes out of business. Slightly better than this is when the company's scraps get aqua hired, which probably doesn't pay investors back, but at least it saves the tech and gives part of the team a job. On the other side of the spectrum, we have unicorn status. Startup gets funded and within a few years, it reaches a billion dollar valuation. Raising money is not the definition of success, mind you, but a billion dollar company must be doing something right for the most part. Now this unicorn startup success, multiple rounds of funding story, probably means that the company has been able to scale revenue by around 300% year on year. That's not a typo, it's 3X annual growth. That's what investors expect. And then to get to that unicorn status, companies often raise multiple rounds of funding. It's usually impossible to grow that fast without some external capital. And these rounds are called seed, series A, series B, series C, and so on. Now, the first round of funding startups raise is often structured as a convertible loan. And we have a full video about them if you wanna understand the instrument of a convertible loan a lot better. But in a nutshell, money is raised as convertible debt. The company commits to converting the investment into shares, but delays the decision until a new round of funding happens so that the convertible note investors follow the same terms as the new investors. Throughout this time, the money invested is not converted into stock, but it is considered debt. On paper, it sounds great, and convertible notes have their advantages. They're a very cheap instrument, legal fees are small, you can close investors at different times and get money in your bank account faster than with any other fundraising approach. The problem is convertible notes or bridge rounds as they're often called are designed for these two startup stories. And there are many stories in the middle where convertible notes can become a hassle. We are one of those stories. And in this video, we're gonna tell you all about it. So here's the danger with convertible notes. All right, so, so we can get on the same page. Here are some of the rules defined in a usual convertible note term sheet. An amount, of course, a valuation cap, since the convertible note will transform into stock at a future valuation, which is defined by the valuation that future investors give the company. Many notes have a cap, a maximum valuation at which the notes will convert. This is to protect investors in case the company value skyrockets. Then there's an interest rate. Again, since the money is dead, a standard 5% interest rate is often used. Then there's a maturity date, a maximum date at which the notes are to execute. If a new round of funding isn't achieved by then, investors have the right to execute the notes, meaning requesting a repayment or converting them or some other term defined in the term sheet. But once again, the terms in this document are usually built on the premise of a future round of funding. That should happen if the company is growing fast. If the company meets that expectation, then the process is very simple. The notes convert using the terms defined by the new round of investors. On the other hand, if the company is struggling, investors may force the founders to liquidate it and to distribute the company assets, which probably wouldn't pay them back their entire investment and certainly wouldn't make them any money, but at least it gives them something. However, requesting a repayment is often regarded as a douche move, and for the most part, investors avoid asking for repayment. It does give them a tool to pressure founders to look for an exit if the company isn't going as expected. However, both of these scenarios relate to the extremes in this diagram. But what about a middle scenario? We could have a scenario around this area where the company is growing slowly and has managed to stay profitable. Maybe it generates a couple of million dollars for revenue per year and maybe some profits. It's a business after all, and nobody would want to kill it but it's not a unicorn story. It's not gonna grow three times year on year, and therefore it doesn't really have access to another round of funding. It doesn't have access to more venture capital. And this scenario was us, Slide Bean in 2017, by the way. And I'll go back to that story in a second. In a better scenario, we could have a company around this area of the diagram where we could have a fast growing business, say 30, 50, maybe even 100% year on year. It's found profitability, and therefore it doesn't really need to raise more money. That's Slidebean in 2020. And that is a successful company by most measures, but the convertible note terms don't really apply to it. It's not gonna raise more capital, at least in the near future, 
it doesn't need to. Paying investors back is certainly a possibility. However, the business would need to get into profitability or cash cow mode to get that capital out quickly to investors, which will inevitably cause the company to slow down. Perhaps that would open an opportunity for another competitor to come in and take advantage. So once again, neither of the convertible note routes or alternatives seems to be a solution for this business, but the business is making money. So what to do? I don't know the right answer to this question. I can just tell you what we did. The 2017 decision. Between 2015 and 2016, we closed around $800,000 in venture capital. We used that to expand aggressively. We expanded our team, our office, and our growth budget. And it kind of worked, but not well enough. We have a full video on that. The point is the runway ended up shortening and we realized that we were not gonna get to the metrics that we needed to raise that next round of funding. And founders at this stage choose one of two routes. One is the full speed ahead route. Continue that aggressive spending while trying to raise more money to continue fueling that. And they may get lucky and raise a bridge round, maybe a post seed investment, but they might not. The problem with this approach, in my opinion, is that you depend on other people to keep the company running. You depend on other investments. So we took another route. We took the profitability route. Painfully, we scaled down the budget and that also meant cutting down part of our team, but we got ourselves into profitability. We cut our monthly expenses from 110K a month to around 70K per month, which was more or less the revenue that we were making at the time. And we survived. We sacrificed our growth. We sacrificed our potential for future funding, at least at that time, but we survived. What happened next was up to us and nobody else, except for the convertible note investors. So I went back to them, explained the situation. I've always been very transparent about our metrics and they, I send them monthly updates and whatnot, but I offered them the possibility to extend the convertible notes maturity date. We had a few ideas that could put us back on that unicorn growth path. So I asked them for time to try them out. So we ended up extending the maturity date for the notes, which delayed this conversion or this decision event and allowed us to refocus on the company and on very different terms this time. The 2020 decision. So we did a lot of things between 2017 and 2020. We added artificial intelligence to our pitch tech builder. We launched our consulting branch, Lightning Agency. We launched our financial model service and began working on our new platform monthly. The fantastic advantage of running a profitable operation is that the company can choose to pursue these projects, these experiments, these new startups within a startup without raising additional capital. And some of these bets paid off. You are watching this YouTube video after all. In 2020, the conversation ended up being very different. We were growing faster. We had the ability to repay some of the notes without causing a financial struggle for the company. The valuation in the cap was more justified now because our revenue was a lot more. So I came to our investors with a very sincere pitch. I laid out the progress that the company had made while being capital constrained. I laid out our ideas for what Slybin could become in the future. And I asked them, what they preferred. I offered them to repay the convertible notes if they didn't believe in what the company could become. And I kind of enforced the fact that we were able to do that and that it wouldn't constrain the company. And I offered them also the option to convert at the cap if they wanted to stay on board this ship that had changed from what the company that they originally invested in. So the convertible note terms allowed each investor to pick individually what they wanted to do. And the vast majority of them chose to convert and the ones who didn't were actually bought out by some of the existing investors that were very bullish on Slidebean and what we were planning on doing. The rest of the money, the company paid back from our cash reserves. So I think this was a fantastic outcome. We ended up with only the investors that really wanted to stay, that really believed in our vision. The company retained some of the stock that we didn't end up issuing because we bought some of that back. And we still have a nice budget and a nice cushion to continue investing in R&D. But here's the problem with all of this. It's so far from the standard. Nobody talks about what happens in the middle ground of this convertible note. Nobody tells you that not raising more venture capital is an option. And even though we are not a startup unicorn success, we are still a profitable multi-million dollar company. I still want the $100 million ARR business that we set out to create a few years ago. I still think that we can become that, but the path is not the straight line that you read in the press. And this alternative path is one that once again, I think nobody wants to talk about. So make sure that you prepare for it. 
if you raise money, by all means, use our pitch deck tools to do it. But remember that raising capital is just a means to an end. The end goal is to build a successful business, but success can come in many ways, not only with a serious F round or an IPO. So what's the solution to this? Just be prepared mentally for that middle scenario. Don't assume that you're gonna be this company or this company. Be prepared for being the company in the middle and make sure that your investors are prepared for that. And most importantly, make sure that your legal documents are prepared for that. So hopefully that story sheds some light into how to manage these things at, at this stage in a business like ours. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments or if you would have approached it differently. See you next week.